Los Angeles, you're on with Robert Higgs. My question is the Great Depression, its causes, and more importantly, the reason it ended. Yesterday on my favorite um, channel, Book TV, Burton Folsom gave a lecture about his new book on the New Deal, which I believe you list as reading, in which he stated that you felt that the reason the Great Depression ended was not what most people think, uh, the World War II, but actually the aftermath of World War II, the death of Roosevelt, and the legislation that came about. Uh, I wanted you to elaborate on that point. Thank you. Well, this is a, uh, uh, an area of research I've been pursuing for uh, 20 years or so, and uh, my most important findings are in my book, a Depression, War, and Cold War. So uh, if you want the full story, I recommend that book. But to, uh, to just give you a hint of the, the kind of argument I developed there, the, uh, the Depression certainly was not over in 1940, say, uh, when uh, the government began to be reshaped for war purposes. Uh, after mid-1940, uh, the administration uh, took uh, greater and greater actions to prepare the country for war, including uh, in September 1940, the initiation of a military draft. So from mid-1940 onward, uh, uh, to a greater and greater extent, the economy is being uh, moved away from the civilian use of goods and services uh, to military use. And eventually, by the time we get to the war peak in 1944, uh, we've got about four-tenths of the whole U.S. economy uh, being devoted to military purposes. Now, uh, pe people often say, in fact, uh, almost everybody believes, even most economists believe, uh, that uh, the war got the economy out of the Depression. And what I've argued in my work is that this is a misunderstanding of what we mean by getting out of a Depression. Yes, unemployment disappeared during the war. There's no doubt about it. It reached the lowest levels ever measured, just a little more than 1% uh, by 1944. Uh, but why did unemployment disappear? Well, overwhelmingly for one single reason, the draft. If you start with 5 or 6 million people unemployed, and then you draft 10 million people, and create an incentive for millions of others to enlist before they get drafted and end up in the infantry, then yes, you will get rid of unemployment. It's a surefire way to do it. Uh, and that's what happened during World War II. Now at the same time, because so many people were uh, drawn away from the civilian labor force, uh, others came in to replace them in, in the production lines. And uh, lots of uh, women who had never worked in the paid labor force before went to work, uh, teenagers dropped out of school and went to work, uh, older people who had retired came out of retirement, went back to work, so, so these uh, men were replaced in, in the labor force uh, and production was able to proceed without them. But uh, if you look at the kind of production that grew during the war, what you find is that this is not a regular business cycle boom at all. In fact, after 1941, civilian goods and services production declined and never got back to its 1941 level until 1946 after the war had ended. So there, 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 there was certainly no prosperity during the war. Uh, the many important civilian goods were rationed. Uh, there were all sorts of rules to tell people what they could and couldn't do. Uh, gasoline was uh, very hard to get. Public transportation was limited and preempted by military authorities. Uh, the list goes on and on. If, if this is your idea of prosperity, you have a very perverse idea of prosperity. It wasn't that. It was a full employment situation because of the draft and the military buildup. It was a, a situation in which a great uh, a mountain of goods and services were, were being produced, but they, they were weapons. and and munitions and other uh, goods and services aimed at uh, maintaining, supporting, training, transporting military forces. And so the U.S. was a, a command economy uh, devoted to military purposes during the war. Uh, after the war, when the uh, demobilization took place, uh, more than uh, uh, 10 million men were released from the armed forces in the first year after uh, the war ended, uh, then real prosperity returned because the government gave up this huge claim it had on resources during the war and allowed them to go back into civilian use again, uh, which they did very quickly and very smoothly. Uh, 
even though many economists, particularly the young Keynesians of the day, who had been prominent during the war and claimed their theories had been validated by the war boom, uh, they all expected that the Depression would uh, resume at the, at the end of the war because the government was moving from a huge deficit in its budget uh, to very quickly to a surplus in its budget and reducing its overall expenditures by uh, about 70 percent quite quickly. This seemed like a Keynesian recipe for plunging the economy into a, a, a renewed depression. But that didn't happen. In fact, the economy uh, uh, performed spectacularly in 1946-47. The unemployment rate stayed below 4% during those years. Uh, and the transition was made very smoothly as government gave up most of its wartime uh, rules, regulation, and uh, resource command, and released uh, uh, men from the armed forces. So, so what we saw there was, in fact, a, a, a tremendous uh, refutation of basic Keynesian thinking. Unfortunately, the Keynesians remembered what they took to be the validation of their model during the war buildup and totally ignored its refutation by what happened at the end of the war. And uh, I've been trying for years to make people look at both ends of uh, the experience during the war and also to appreciate, uh, above all, that, that war and prosperity were not linked, even during World War II. Uh, just getting rid of unemployment by uh, putting people in the armed forces involuntarily uh, is, a, is a horrible way to deal with a depression. And in his book, Neither Liberty Nor Safety, Robert Higgs writes, in ways big and small, direct and indirect, crude and subtle, war, the quintessential government activity, has been the mother's milk for the nourishment of a growing tyranny in this country, and it remains so today. How, how does that apply to the current Iraq War? Well, I think when, whenever we have the government uh, at war, as we do now, although it's an odd kind of war, it's uh, certainly not the kind of war we had during World War II, but whenever the government goes to war, uh, it has an excuse for doing uh, uh, outrageous things. For example, it, it's used the excuse of the, of the wars and the related war on terror uh, to basically gut the Constitution's Bill of Rights. Uh, the, we thought we had a Fourth Amendment to protect us from uh, warrantless search and seizure. But the government has informed us in recent years that we don't have any Fourth Amendment protection. In fact, that the government will spy on us however, whenever it wishes and get away with it because uh, no one will do anything to stop it. This, uh, the courts won't stop it effectively. It just goes on doing it. So uh, our right to privacy has been egregiously violated and gutted by the government on grounds that this was a war necessity, that the government needed uh, to spy on everybody in order to make sure that terrorism uh, didn't uh, uh, occur in our midst again. Uh, it's, a, it's the most outrageous kind of exploitation of the fear that uh, goes along with war and other forms of national emergency. So this would be just one example, but there are a great many others. Uh, the government has increased its, uh, its budget size hugely uh, since 2001. Much of this was excused on the grounds that, that the government had to spend more to respond uh, to the threat of terrorism. Uh, this was, for the most part, a bogus uh, excuse because if we look at where the money actually went, uh, a relatively small part of it actually went uh, to purposes that have anything to do with combating terrorism. And in fact, uh, an enormous amount of it went to the welfare state, uh, which was a kind of deal between the uh, Bush administration and the Democrats so that everybody would be cut in on the government's growth during this, this period of uh, very rapid economic growth uh, excused by the necessity of war.